Oh, we're ready, baby. I'm just looking at how to hack a Nintendo Switch. You ever do one of them, guys? Nope. This is actually a pretty cool article. It's by Input Mag, and it's all designed all cool. Yeah. It's got a cool graphic design. No, that's nothing. That's got stuff. Pretty cool. Nintendo sucks. Okay, we didn't got to <laughs> go that deep into it. Nintendo over the years have made many, many terrible business decisions, which is why they are in the rut of a situation they are in now. What is what is it? What is the rut? Oh, just in a awkward financial spot. Uh, their console is not doing very good, and I think I- that. Along the way, maybe they have made some mistakes and there are things that I would have done different. Oh, I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. So this, this is, a, this is a, you're being facetious. You're being cute. A little. <laughs> you're, being, you're being coy. <laughs> well, I do feel like Nintendo have had a lot of missed opportunities. They Hey, we always talk about how they do wackies. They do weedies. And sometimes the wackies don't pay off. No. It's not always a payoff to be a silly little willy billy. (laughs) And Bob found a thread on Reddit. Yeah, we're stealing a thread (laughs) from Reddit. I thought this was an interesting topic. A lot of times before we do the show, I just go to r slash Nintendo and see what everybody's talking about. And I thought this was was interesting. It's just like, what was Nintendo's biggest missed opportunity? Yeah, it's interesting because there are so many things, even just with the Switch, that I have always wanted done differently or hoped for or begged for. I've made videos about it. People are always talking about it in comment sections. There are missed opportunities. Sometimes, despite Nintendo's success, they've done a lot of things that I can only help but feel like would have made them more successful. Yeah, that there, there's a lot of things that with hindsight, we know might have been a little better off, but mm-hmm. they didn't have the privilege of hindsight. Also, they like doing wackies. Well, also some of it is like, why have you not done that? Everyone else is doing that. Oh, yeah. Well, that seems like we can pull from some more recent things. Well, my things are going to be a lot of recent because the the things I care about are happening now. Yeah. <laughs> like the previous things are fun to look at, I guess, but I don't care as much. Well, I, I care a lot about the history. The yeah, history I mean, I, oh, I There's care. There's a lot of his, historic stuff that they've totally effed. I care, but it almost feels like it's just fun to talk about what's going to happen now. You know, I can't mm-hmm. go back and change them not buying Rare. I'm sure they'll do... Some missed opportunities when the next Switch comes out. We'll be talking about this again. Yes. Also, Ian Bingo here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, one of our favorites. It's trade. Here I we are. couldn't live without it, honestly. <laughs> It's trade. We do this. We love this one. This one we've been doing since even before we even did a podcast. We got trade. I know. And I'll be doing it long after. <laughs> <laughs> I have to because I need coffee every single day. I need multiple. I need a lot of them. I got a problem. Uh, I got this one literally uh, yesterday. This is a uh, Cuve Carmadillo blend. This one has... Sounds like uh, a caramel armadillo. Sounds like Rolling Thunder's armadillo big time guy. Big that man game, too. That game mm-hmm. that we like. Uh, this is... Where are the notes? They're good. Where'd they go? I don't remember. It's from Austin. Texas. While he's finding the you notes... Love Texas. Oh, Texas is big. The holidays and rap- are rapidly approaching and Trade is here to help you nail your gift giving this year. For subscriptions to limited edition gift boxes, there's something for everybody in your life. Giving the gift of coffee for Christmas actually makes a lot of sense. Yes. Give me that. Did you did you find the notes yet? Yeah, they're right here at the top, looking me in the face, rich and chocolatey. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> delicious. Trade, that's actually my favorite kind. Trade is your destination for better coffee at home. Experience the best created for you coffee delivered straight to your bo- door. <laughs> bo- curated to your door. <laughs> When you when and how you want, whether you already know what you like or are new to specialty coffee and need some help, Trade makes it easy and convenient to discover new coffees. I'm discovering new coffees every single time I do Trade. I've never had Cuvée before. I'm excited mm-hmm. to try it. Actually, I think it's because I changed my whole little preference. So you 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 do a little thing on their website, and it 
matches you with coffees that best fit your taste profiles. And I changed mine recently, and that's why I'm getting some chocolatey ones. So I'm excited to try it. I haven't really gotten much uh, uh, desserty stuff. And I've been getting, how? I've been getting chocolate and fruity this whole time, so add fruit to that. We'll be on the same wavelength. Oh, baby. Give the gift of better coffee at home. Buy yourself a trade subscription and enjoy your first bag free. That's the offer we always have, but this time we have a special holiday offer added to this. You can also send one of Trade's holiday gift boxes to a loved one and enjoy free shipping for a limited time. So whether you're buying for yourself or somebody that you love, Trade's got you covered and so do we. Visit drinktrade.com forward slash Nintendo to get brewing. That's drinktrade.com forward forward slash Nintendo. Always managed to screw that one up. Nailed it. That was beautiful. Also, mm-hmm. you know what? While we're at it, you can enjoy your trade in your nice new Nintendo mug. That should yeah, be the up mugs, right now. <laughs> the mugs came into our management team today. So we don't have them right now, but they are officially in and We've decided not only are they launching at the low, low price of $15 a mug. Oh, boy, that's a cheap mug. But <laughs> we're going to allow them to be included in uh, ScreenWave's already existing 20% off Black Friday sale. So while that sale is happening, they're 20% off. We just launched them, and they're already cheaper than normal. <laughs> so to be fair, we were already thinking about making them $15. So they're just... They're just cheaper. Screw it. Cheaper. Just take them. Also, uh, they're commemorative <laughs> at this point. <laughs> if you want to be a part of the Bob and Wood Nintendo history, uh, I would grab one of these. Obviously, we're not ever making these mugs again. Uh, so get one while there's only I like a hundred. W- so. I would love one. We don't even we don't even have them yet. <laughs> there's only like ninety eight because we both want one. Oh yeah, baby, one hundred and forty eight. Oh. But okay, thanks guys. Brad- Grab your trade and put it in a Nintendo mug. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Now, what would you change about Nintendo? Everything. Get them out. <laughs> Top brass. Get them out. Put me in. Mm-hmm. First thing we're going to do, Call of Duty on the Switch. More blood. <laughs> I, I do actually. And guts. I mean, I don't know if you're being facetious, but I do think that is a missed opportunity. Yeah, that is one of the missed Call opportunities. Switch, yeah. Yeah. But whose fault is it? Mm, Activision. That's not Nintendo. In yeah, my opinion. I mean, it's a little bit Nintendo for n- making their console so different than the other two consoles. You can it, it, Call of Duty's on mobile. Okay, true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, they thank could you. do that. Appreciate you. Uh, I remember when Call of Duty they would make them for the Wii. That was very a very different console yeah, than that, the other but consoles. They, those weren't good. And then they make then then they make Call of Duty for the DS. What they did was they filled Nintendo with garbage Call of Duties, and then they were like, this isn't worth it. I I don't know what's happening. I think that's what happened. They made DS, Wii, and Wii U Call of Duties, and then went, oh, we're going to give up on Nintendo, right as they made a pretty normal console. Yeah, I think a lot of people gave up on Nintendo because of the Wii U era. You can plug, you can dock a Switch, use a Pro Controller, play Call of Duty all day long. You remember when the Switch first came out, there was like no third-party support Mm -hmm. because everyone was scared of it. Well... Yes, yeah, that is true. It got, it, but it got good real quick. To be fair, like, it only took about six months to a year before third parties were like, "Oh, we we should try here." One of the first publishers to support the Switch was Activision because of Skylanders. Oh, true. They were like one of the first ones. It's also like I don't know. Ubisoft has always backed the Switch, and you would think that Activision could look at that and be like, "Well, they're getting success." Yeah, Ubisoft kind of like a took a company. minute, but it was Rabbits that made them really like. Uh, uh, Ubisoft has been on launch for Nintendo consoles up until the Switch, and then they just took a minute on the Switch. Yeah, they took a minute. But they had like Zombie U on launch for Wii U. And yeah, they had, they, uh, they had a lot of Assassin's Creed. I think Red Steel might have been Ubisoft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So. The, Ubisoft has had a really good relationship with Nintendo for forever, which is why them doing Mario and Rabbids was never a surprise to me. Ubisoft Paris. I did not know that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, Ubisoft, I mean, they they Because they have to, like, work with Nintendo and the Switch to bring out a launch game that is directly uh, using all of the wackies. Now, EA... Because Red Steel was a wacky game. EA still barely has anything on the Switch. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They've been uh, uh, against it. Yeah, they haven't even put Mass Effect on the Switch, which is wild. Yeah. Because you think throwing that collection on the Switch would would have done numbers. I don't know about now. I'd still buy it. 
but it's such an easy thing to port over. What has EA been making lately? Because oh, I, mistakes. Yeah, I feel like I have not been into it like at all. I don't know I'm what does EA do now. The garbage, crap. They had Battlefield, right? That was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah Battlefield was bad. Yeah, bad. that was very bad. <laughs> 20, I remember that. Whatever it was numbered, it was so EA, bad. EA I'm Sports. Lo- I'm, I'm looking. It's in the game. They made Medal of Honor. Remember that. I do remember that. That also a series that had always come to Nintendo consoles, I think. Right? That was like a Wii Medal I of Honor. I have a list of oh, EA original titles. There's like there's like 10 games on here. Huh? Just old games. Knockout City was EA. Am I am I wrong on the Wii? No, it was on Wii. What I had it. About? What are we talking about? Medal of Honor. Oh, yeah. yeah it's yeah, on yeah. Wii. Yeah, they, they, they had a revival around that time, and that was very bad. That was a bad game. But yeah, Knockout City, the the dodgeball game was. Oh, EA. that game was actually fun. But it was fun. Even while playing minute. it, I was like, "This has got a week left." Also, it takes two. Is EA? Oh well, yeah, mm, kind of. It's uh, cool it's uh, what's that guy's name that made it? Yeah, the fun guy that swears guy and is handsome. Oh, and his studio yeah, is called. Uh, yeah. His what's his studio called? It's really his. It's yeah. just EA is is helping fund him. Why are these lists like like this? This list stops at 2016. Have they just not made anything? Titanfall, EA oh, made Titanfall. Dude, Titanfall. ran that. Oh, Apex, Haze Light Studios, right. Haze Light. Thank you. Yeah, Gustav Grefberg. Oh my God, Gustav. What a fucking name. Sounds like he makes chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh, and Plants vs. Zombies. That was a big Nintendo thing. Uh, yeah, EA made a uh, Titanfall, and they, uh, the, I guess Apex took a while, but it was like the first battle royale. Apex is Switch. on Switch. Yeah. To be fair, uh, they need to do something with Titanfall now. Uh, what what was your missed opportunity that got us here? Call of Duty. Yeah. That so was is that kind your, of a that, joke? But yeah, we kind of spun on it. So you think that is an actual one? I mean, when you look at best selling games of all time, there is literally. Mario Kart, Minecraft, and then I think third is Call of Duty. It's hard. Well, Grand Theft Auto is number one, I think. Mm, true. I don't know. I forgot that. Uh, it's also Tetris is up there. <laughs> Call of Duty is in the top five. Okay. I'm going to look. Um, What was I going to say? Uh, missed opportunity. I don't know if I can blame Nintendo for other publishers not wanting to put games on the Switch. <laughs> that, that That's a weird missed opportunity to have. It is kind of their fault for fucking up the Wii U so bad. And making publishers not want to get in. So I guess the Wii U is the biggest missed opportunity because they made a, a bad console. If you'd like to know, the first thing on Reddit here, the top voted response is uh, by Lord of the Reef, who says, I don't know if it's missed, but creating a decent online gaming presence that doesn't completely change and break with each new console, which I think we knew about. I'm just still, I'm just doing a podcast. By myself. I am listening. <laughs> Series, it's number four. What for best-selling series, Call of Duty. Okay. It goes Mario, Tetris, Pokemon. Tetris uh, is series? Yeah. Oh, my God. Call of Duty, and then GTA. Wow. Yeah, crazy. But if you look at best-selling games of all time, GTA Five is number one. Yeah. So. Where's Tetris? I, I, I'm I gone. Okay. So the missed opportunity, <laughs> this guy says, is uh, online presence, which is, yeah, that's the, one of the things they're trying to fix is uh, the As account in, system. Yeah. But this is also probably referencing uh, how the online, uh, how games, there are first party games that are online have shitty online. The online, specifically for, I mean, for Switch, because that's not, you know. Uh, that's where I think I have a lot of my gripes as far as biggest missed opportunities. A fun one is achievements. I've always said that I think it'd be really cool if they gave you like stars or for doing certain things. What are what are the garbage mm-hmm. online coins that they have? Is it the silver ones? Yeah. Silver and well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you get something like stars or even the silver coins, that could all tie into their little like, oh, get this many, you can unlock an avatar. It would be really cool to like, like have like an avatar that is like a million silver coins. So like, yeah. you know, like this guy plays a lot well, of games. Well, also they could have done Mies still. Mm-hmm. And then you you get achievements and they give you coins or stars or whatever. And you can get like a hat for your me. And then you build out this me. And then you could go to the me verse and look at so everyone's me. You're reminding me now. Street Pass is a big missed opportunity. Yeah, not yeah, having that yeah. on the Switch. Mine. Yeah. Also removing Mies. Like there's a kind of a shitty me on the Switch. But 
one of my favorite things on the 3DS was having your me, having the street pass, mm-hmm. going around, finding all these people. Yeah. And then you would unlock outfits for your me so you could like have this crazy hat. And it's like, oh my God, that guy's met so many yeah. street passes. You and know? it's it's not just because of nostalgia or because we think it's fun or cute or kitschy. It's because these ideas and these ideals actually lead to the Switch building its ecosystem out and leading to more sales. And like, let's say the achievement aspect leads to people playing more games, at least yeah. to them replaying games, playing them longer, trying to achievement hunt. And then you have the Miiverse side of thing where everyone wants to walk around with their Switch, take it places, make sure they have it on them, make sure they have one because their friends have one. The same reason we all have iPhones now to airdrop to each other. You know, it builds that ecosystem that other people want to get involved with. So the Mario Maker 2 has your Mii. You can put your Mii in it and everybody sees your Mii while you're playing and stuff. What Uh, Mii? Where's the Mii from? uh, I don't know how that works. There's, when a, I, there's a meme maker still. It's when like I first thing. made my Switch account, it took my me from my 3DS. Oh, okay. Uh, and my icon is my me. Okay. So I don't remember so how he it got exists. There. He's just lost in space and yeah, time. Yeah, I don't know how to get there. Yeah. But it took it for Mario Maker 2. Like my guy is also in Mario mm-hmm. Maker 2. And it's the same me. But in Mario guess, Maker they're 2. They're also in Smash, I guess. Yes. Yeah. In Mario Maker 2, you unlock outfits and stuff. But they're like really cool and like hard to get. Like some of them, like you can get a hoodie that has Mm -hmm. like an animation on it. Mm -hmm. And one of the ones I have is like, have 10,000 people play your level. And it's like, who's gonna fucking have that one? That's crazy. It's awesome. Or there's one that like, if you're S tier, you get like an awesome like hat, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I go play online, my little me comes up and it's like, oh, that dude's legit. He's got the fucking hoodie. He's got the chicken hoodie. It's like, it's like a, it's like a, plate of chicken curry that's like steaming he's got the flip flops with the pom-poms on them exactly like shit like that so like imagine that but it's like you do it through achievements you, you yeah you play a bunch of games and you get that's what gamer i'm saying score and you can you can buy like a cool and then you can see your, your other friends achievements and see if they've actually beat the games they say that they've beat <laughs> that would be i do like that a lot of people were would go through the list of their friends and see how many hours they have in the mm-hmm. games so yeah. being able to see like what they've achieved in the game. And you cool like on Xbox, you can compare your achievements to your friend to see which ones they do or don't have. I remember being in high school with, or yeah, I think it was in high school. I, I went, I would go to fucking like Xbox.com and look and just sit in class and look at all my friends, like the Xbox version that is of their me. So nerdy. And, and see, I love all, it. see my gamer score and yeah. their achievements and stuff. Uh, me and, and my I would friends. just look at it. I would just sit there and look at everything. <laughs> Instead of learning, it explains a lot. Yeah. He's learning you know? about something else. More yeah, important. true. It's numbers. <laughs> uh, my friends and I, we all had Xboxes. It was like, that was the crew we were in. And our gamer score was like our level of hierarchy yeah. in the friend group. Yeah. It was like who had the, and it was usually me Kane and Michael were the highest and they were always a step above me and I was just chasing them, but they would do s- disgusting things. Like they would buy the avatar game to I get the that. thousand. Game I brought that home from GameStop. Just I always refused. I was like, I'm going to earn mine the right way. So I know everyone in my game is cool. And I hated when I put a game in to just, try it out and then I got an achievement but I didn't like the game and now I just have that achievement there and I can't get rid of it. For those of you who don't know, there's this one random avatar game where you get the biggest achievement with the most gamer score. I think it's a thousand you can gamer get score. A, you can complete it in, in less than 20 minutes. Yeah, because the I'm pretty sure what it was, was it was for combos. So you yeah. chain combos and if you just load up the game and then fight the first enemy and spam the button, you'll just hit all the achievements in like 30 seconds and yeah. then you just don't have to play it anymore. Yeah. I borrowed the game from GameStop, played it, and then returned it the next day. Because I worked there, so I just took the game mm-hmm. out and brought it back. Um, I, I didn't fuck around with stuff like that too much, though. But that one, I felt like I had to do that. That was kind of the... Yeah, that game got passed around. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible game. Because Oh, no. No one played it. They yeah. just got the achievements. Well, a lot of people played it <laughs> for, for that. <laughs> for 30 seconds. But yeah, then I was upset because uh, all my friends got PlayStation 4s. I wanted an mm. Xbox One, but they really fucked up. The, that's an Xbox missed opportunity right there. That, that They lost yeah. the North American market because they the Xbox One oh, it was, was a train so wreck. bad. It was a train wreck, yeah. They, they, they lost their lead in North America. That happened with my friend group too. Half of us stayed true and the other half got PlayStation. I got both, but it still separated the whole group. Yeah. And it was like, do we play here? Do we play here? It All sucked. my friends got PlayStation, so I just... I was trying so hard to keep them on Xbox because I wanted the gamer mm-hmm. score, but it was too it was too late. I still up until this current gen, 
would buy games on Xbox instead of PlayStation, even though I preferred PlayStation because I wanted the gamer score. <laughs> and I've only just now let go of it because now, I'd rather just play on PlayStation. At now this point. I just want it if it's on Game Pass. If it's on Game Pass, even on my PC, mm-hmm. I'll play it through Game Pass. But it's got uh, well, nothing to do with the with the gamer score. Also, Everything's so fragmented now. I got. I was Steam. about to say the exact same thing. Now yeah. I've got Steam. I got Steam Decks. I used to try to keep everything the on the Switch. Yeah, but now it's like it's so much easier on. Well, Steam. the Switch not having achievements too has made it so now I I try and play games on Switch as much as I can. They come to Xbox. I'll wait for the Switch version. So I'm not even pl- I'm not even going for achievements anymore. So I've just given up. Sometimes achievements surprise me because I played. I guess I played Nintendo stuff for like mm-hmm. so long that like when I'm playing a game on the computer or even Steam achievements. Or on Xbox, I'm like, what the fuck was that sound? <laughs> it like comes up in the corner. I'm like, who's the, that? Who's the messaging worst me? one was recently because Alan Wake Two came out, but only on Epic Store. Mm-hmm. And I've never, I never buy Epic Store games. And Alan Wake Two was like a horror, scary game. Yeah. The achievement sound on Epic is like, yeah, and you'll be playing Alan Wake, and you're like <laughs> in the middle of the the darkness with a gun and a flashlight, and things go, and you shoot something in the head, and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know they now have achievements for retro games and emulators uh yeah emu well i was talking about emu deck before see even they know that it's a good idea achievements and it has cloud saves and you can sync it <laughs> even they know it's a good <laughs> idea it's man. crazy site, yeah you log into the site and then it just an, it pops up and you're like oh you're gonna have achievements for mario 64 and you're like oh, and you, you can know, add would, friends and stuff it would be mind-blowing if they know that they should do something like this and they just decided to just not for switch and save it for switch too and on launch day we have achievements we have all of the ones yeah that'd it be would cool. be so cool well i don't know that'd if, be a lot of I'm development not, work i'm not saying backdate it i'm just saying from moving forward they just have achievements on the switch too right yeah. so like Think about you play, well, maybe they backdate some games. You put in like Tears of the Kingdom and you get off the Great Plateau and you get the little achievement for starting the game and it's a little, some coins and then you go to the store and because you're playing Zelda, you can use it for some Zelda items, like a little green hat or something. Yeah, I want rewards it for, would be really for cool. buying a lot of Nintendo stuff. Yeah. And, it would and just encourage players to play more and, and play more games. I want everyone to know I'm a gamer. I know. <laughs> yeah. God, they could do so much there. That might so be the much. biggest because it just sounds so fun. That yes. Yeah, also, I'll I'll say the the online that just doesn't work right. That, yeah. That's yeah. They've tried to fix it. Monster Hunter used a new uh, online service. Some of their other games used newer online, and it kind of works better. Yeah, you know what I've noticed too. Nintendo's what? first party games are usually pretty good, but anything else like, like online, Nintendo's first party games are usually very bad. <laughs> for I online. say pretty good in comparison <laughs> to what. The the other company, the second party, third party I'd, games. I'd argue the opposite. The, really? Yeah, third party games usually have much better online on the Nintendo Switch than Nintendo. Games. Not always. Most of the time. Like what? Fortnite. What, what's bad? What what third party game has bad online? Anything that's not like a super popular, okay, big publisher game. Okay. If I've played you. anything kind of like you know indie why? with online, it's just horrible. You know why? Because Nintendo doesn't give them the tools to make it good. Probably They're, the, Nintendo's tools are bad, but third parties like Epic, who makes Fortnite, mm-hmm. and uh, EA that makes Apex, mm-hmm. they already have tools to make good online, so they just use the tools that they Fortnite's have. Fortnite's online on Switch is really good. Yeah, it was, yeah, and remember, it has voice chat. Remember in they, game, they launched Fortnite on Switch. It had voice chat, which blew everybody's mind because you could just plug your headphones right mm-hmm. in and just talk. Which, which I didn't know you could even opportunity. do that. I know. I didn't even know it had a mic port. <laughs> That the, blew me away. The head jack, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't know that worked for both. So that and also crossplay. Fortnite launched on Switch with crossplay mm-hmm. except for PlayStation. And that's when everybody found out that PlayStation oh, yeah. was the holdout. And then Sony had to come out and be like, all right, we'll allow it. And then that from that point forward, everybody just expected games to have crossplay. Yeah. That's actually wild. I've forgot that. I know the time it's easy to forget play. about that, yeah. but it like was recent and like yeah. just happened. Mm-hmm. Before that, it was never an expectation to be able to play on your Switch or on your pl- Xbox with somebody who had That's PlayStation. That's so true. And I really do take that for up. granted now already. Epic kind of fucking like blew the lid off of that. Thank God. Thank God for they Epic. Also, they tried Thank to God blow, for our billion dollar company. They tried to blow the lid off of Apple or Sam's Apple. Apple and now Google. They're, they're, uh, really? They, they, I think, lost the lawsuit with Apple and say. now they are fighting against Google. I don't think. So have they, are they still on Google Store? They I don't know. I have no idea how it is. 
They lost a lot of money to pull it from Apple. But yeah. they're claim so Tim Sweeney, I think, is the CEO. He's claiming that they're that this is actually a good thing and they're making money off of it because uh it's one of those things like instead of going through uh the iOS store, they have to go straight to Epic. So they're gonna make more money in Wait, you can still get it on iPhone if you go through Epic? I don't th- no, I, I, it's some weird thing. Oh. He, he's basically claiming you now have to sign up for an Epic account, which is mm. worth more than making money through iOS. Okay. Kind of like how console manufacturers will take a loss on selling the console because they know you're going to be stuck in their mm-hmm. ecosystem. He's saying we're taking a loss being on iOS and Google because you just have to come directly to us now. Okay. <sighs> I thought Epic won that. And then Apple tried to overrule it or over something. They, there were different things that they were fighting for. There was multiple things. And Epic, I think, lost on the big one, but won a couple little ones or something. Re- oh, yeah. Rejected Epic's antitrust claims against Apple. Okay. It's very confusing. Yeah. But they're still, I'm pretty sure they're not on iOS still. Um, but, I mean, I kind of appreciated what Epic was trying to do because they... You have this big, I mean, it's a billion dollar company versus another billion dollar company. But Epic was trying to say that uh, Apple's taking a lot of money from independent developers and stuff. And they were trying to say like they were like the independent developers, but still. I think we can all agree that was not Epic's biggest mistake. Uh It was not Epic. Whoa. It was not very Epic. (laughs) What was the missed opportunity for Nintendo there? Fortnite. Fortnite. Online service being shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, and we, it's just a played out conversation to even talk about the mobile phone app, right? Oh, yeah. It's horrible. I don't even want to. There's a lot of features that it has that uh, are not just voice chat, but everybody knows it as voice chat and everyone hates it for that. It sucks. Yeah. And all the other features are garbage too. But again, I just was- Just put them on the Switch. I was talking about how you used to just fuck around with the Xbox app in high school. I want those types of features where I can just see everyone's like gamer score and what they're playing. You know what's stuff weird though about that? What? It's it's another case of Nintendo seemingly want to have two screens. Like trying to find yeah. a way to to take their console and have two screens. Remember in the PS4 Xbox One era, the dual you could like take a tablet, some games would like sync to the tablet. Yeah. Yeah. But like the Everything that's the dual on screen experience. They had yes. Blu-rays that did that too. What? Yeah, there were like Blu-rays where you had the dual screen experience. What would be on both of the screens? I have no idea. I never did it. On the app, it's all things that like <laughs> you kind of need open, I guess, like the chat and then and then some games would have interactivity, like Splatoon would show you like I the percent of how much is covered or something while you're playing. So it was a live reaction to what's happening in the game. That's cool. And it's a dual, it's that dual, it's screen, a dual experience. screen experience. Like with the Wii U and the TV, it seems like they do want to have two screens, like the DS and the 3DS. I found an article from 2010. The dual screen about experience. About the dual screen article? experience for Kick Ass. Remember the movie Kick Ass? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's just a menu. I don't know. <laughs> That, that kicks ass. That kicks ass, dude. And then after that, it was all about 3D TVs. Remember that? Remember the Where they Sony? would flicker uh, on different... <laughs> yeah. You'd have a fucking stroke trying to watch kick ass. And, the, and, the, and that one TV that came with glasses. So when someone was watching it without glasses, it could be one thing. And the mm-hmm. person with glasses was seeing another thing. Yeah. Because the glasses would flicker. <laughs> That's how that worked. That's so cool, though. You know how when you take a camera and you point it at a light and it flickers? Oh, yeah, baby. It's, the glasses are so, basically blinking for you. So Correct that, me if I'm wrong, but would that not halve the refresh rate? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you'd Half. be watching it in, like, lower frames or lower refresh yeah. rate? Yep. Oh. But if it's a movie, it doesn't matter. It's 24 frames. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter. That but is it's cool, It's a though. game that sucks. But some games integrated with it because instead of a split screen, mm-hmm. playing multiplayer split screen, mm-hmm. you can have it so each I know, it's so cool. It's a full screen, but then you get half the refresh rate. It's probably like 15 frames a second. That's so cool. I never got to experience it. There's Nintendo's missed opportunity having a... A 3D TV. 3D TV. Well, no, they did, actually. (laughs) They they had a 3DS. Someone else in the... If you want to go a little bit more retro in the Reddit thread said, not putting a DVD drive in the GameCube. 
Yeah. We have that. That was with the Panasonic Q. <laughs> we we have that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You and I have that. I never even heard of that until I got older. The Panasonic, Panasonic Q? Q? Yeah. Yeah. Never even knew that. Existed. I didn't hear about it till the first time I came to America and then I saw one and I was like, oh, I want that. <laughs> so PlayStation won that generation because it, ha- it was a really cheap, great, uh, multi-purpose DVD, player. DVD yeah. player, yeah, and then the PlayStation Three uh, was a g- good option for that same reason. Mm-hmm. The blue, blue also, even when it it launched at like seven hundred dollars, but at the time it, it was, was still, still the an cheapest affordable Blu-ray player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. PS Three, PS Three, yeah, yeah, because like yeah, wasn't the DVD the DVD players were like a thousand dollars or something? Blu-ray, yeah, they were blue, expensive. When the PS Three, oh, DVD, oh yeah, well when the PS Three came out, Blu-ray players were like two thousand dollars. Yeah, Blu-rays they were, were so really, expensive, they were pricey, yeah. and everyone was complaining about the PlayStation being seven hundred, but it was the cheapest Blu-ray player you could get, yeah. which was the main reason people were buying them. Well, not yeah, main reason, but that, a large that, reason. That was a big reason why they got the PS2. Yeah. Because it was $300 the, or whatever. Mm-hmm. The other things too is your past libraries from PS1 into PS2. Like you had an yeah. insane library. Like yeah, going you can, into PS2. it had backwards compatibility, mm-hmm. which the GameCube couldn't have because it was a... Uh, it, it was disc. N64 N- was cartridge, yeah. yeah. Uh, another one in here says uh, that... Uh, they heard that CDs not being part of N64 made it harder for developers <laughs> to develop for it. And that's why some developers jumped to Sony because yep. mm. discs were a huge innovation at the time. It, it, yeah. You could put a, it was cheaper. You could put a lot more stuff on it, but Nintendo wanted to have a proprietary thing. They still do. Square Enix was always with Nintendo and they switched yeah. off to Sony yeah, because they couldn't say, put FF7 on the N64. That was, it, would, yeah. it would have been a lot of it cartridges. It was either going to be four discs or 16 cartridges. Now, everyone's going back to cartridges. Everybody's <laughs> going true. back to physical yeah. media. Mm-hmm. Now I'll take a physical game any way you can give it to me yeah. because Alan Wake 2 was the first game that I've really been excited for and didn't have a physical. Mm-hmm. I had to buy a digital and it really sucked. How many discs was Final Fantasy VII? Four? Three. Four. Three. It was four, right? No, three. Oh. Three for the PC version, that was four. Oh. Which I didn't even know Why? Existed. There was a I, PC I, I, version? Oh, he's going to you get it. He's going to get it. I don't even know that. That's I wild. Either, and that's like, yeah. I only knew about that because when it came out on the Switch, it is the PC version. Really? <laughs> yeah. And also, I think it's on iOS and it's just the PC version. I will say on the flip side, any of the missed opportunities Nintendo made with in that regard that made Sony more popular or famous in any way, I'm glad it happened because now we have PlayStation. <laughs> Yeah, well, which has given us so many other experiences. One of the missed opportunities I was going to bring up was one of the missed opportunities I was going to bring up. We got people talking. I, it's four discs. I found it at a at a weird pawn shop. In now Seattle. for the PC. There's like a phone number in there too. There's like it's it's weird. That Who's case phone? is so cool. It's it, cool. Though. Yeah, it's it's wacky. It's like, like I, a big I paper was, case. I was in Seattle at some random pawn shop, and then I found that and do something for like fifty bucks. There's an ad for Daikatana totally on the back. Design this design ad the looks like a like a drug safety ad or mm-hmm. a police ad or something. Are you stuck? Are you stuck? Need assistance? Call us for strategy and gameplay guides. <laughs> I wonder if that number still works. Go for it. I want to try. That I was gonna style's awesome. I was gonna say. Sony came to Nintendo first and said, let's make a console together. And Nintendo said, no. And then they're like, fine, we'll just make PlayStation. It was all, yeah, I mean. And then that console sold for $300,000 or some shit. Yeah, it's one of the rare Yeah, it's on a museum somewhere. Been restricted or is unavailable. Please Rip. How am I going to get help on my Final Fantasy VII now? You can't. Isn't that phone number for Nintendo still good? It is. Called? Yeah. And they fixed NESs for like 20 years. That's wild. They would charge you, and this is back when this came out, a dollar a minute to get advice. Come on, come on. How do I fucking- It would take me at least- Find a, Sephiroth. At least a couple minutes to explain where I'm stuck. Yeah. Why is the dog red? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> I only have $2. Please help me. There was this guy when I worked at GameStop. <laughs> I used to open and I would be like, there no one would come in. There was this dude who, who would come in. I called him Max Payne guy. And he'd come in and be like, I'm in this part of Max Payne. I, there's like a big truck. I don't know. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then he he kept telling me about it. And I was like, I don't know. And then he's I'm like, you know, bring in your memory card. And he, I set up a PlayStation. He brought in his memory card. And then I beat the part for him because 
it's a truck and you have to snipe a little cinder block that's on the wheel. How the fuck would anybody ever know yeah. to do that? There is also in there, there is a um, cutout that you put over your number Oh, yeah, pad, I saw that, yeah. And it would tell you this, what, what each number pad thing means. Oh, like yeah. controls. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's mm-hmm. dope. That's insane. Controls, the yeah. way they adapted controls was nuts. Yeah. But that was, that was one of the coolest things I've found so far. Like, How much was it? 50 bucks. 50? I a pawn shop in Seattle. What? Yeah, dude. I was like, you realize, I didn't say anything. I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you realize, all right. <laughs> it's cool. That's like. No, because the, the usual box art for that is him stand, like well, looking at it. Looking at it. Yeah, that's. That's totally like different. like him, you, you know, facing you. Yeah. That's yeah, a weird key art. Jackson apparently knew about that because that's his favorite game ever, whatever. I don't think he really, I think he lied to me. I don't think anybody, because I was like, you know, they made a PC version. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only know about it because that's the version they used to port to other consoles. Yeah. I so never I knew know. about that. And I'm a big Final Fantasy nerd. I know. <clears throat> of course you did. I played Metal Gear solid on PC. They had a PC port of that. Didn't know that about that either. And that had wacky keyboard controls. Hey, I mean, I play Mario games on the PC all the time. I didn't know. I Imagine used if to. it was a completely <laughs> different game. <clears throat> like when they used to do like, uh, PC and console games and they were like two different versions yeah. of the game. That's just like a different version. They of have Fantasy. the uh, yes. Mario 3 DOS port up at the museum in Rochester. Uh, some company made a DOS version of uh, uh, Super Mario 3 and Nintendo said, no, we don't want that. That'd be uh-huh. cool. You know, you guys ever thought about doing a podcast up there? Like that I don't want to go up there. Why it's like not? eight hours. Where is it? Where Rochester. Where is it? Rochester's Upstate. not that far. It's like four. We can what's go to the there? museum. It's the uh, video game history museum. Yeah. It's, oh. It's the largest. That's where like the like uh, what's his name? Um, Tynology. Gerard's three D. Oh really? That's where it is. It's, it's Let's right go. There. Yeah. Why not? Because I got to drive eight hours. We'll just do it sometime next year. We'll make a fun thing out of it. <laughs> okay. is it isn't the, the original <laughs> NES PlayStation there? No, that, that's a private that, guy who someone... who has been taking it around. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's see. Maybe we could do a fun episode there where like we do a tour and we just edit it to be an hour episode one day. We could uh cool. we could definitely set something up there if we wanted to. Two cameras. That would be fun. Some, like shoot it. I'm down to see more of the country. Then, then I gotta go up there. <laughs> well, we will we'll figure out another reason to go too, so it's not just that. Why would we want to go to Rochester? Besides going to that plate? one. You want to get a garbage plate? No. I don't know. I don't know what else is up there. Is it straight up? Is it near Niagara Falls at all? It's oh. closer to Niagara Falls. I've never been. I've Actually, I don't know that. because I, I, it's big up there. Rochester is not close to Niagara Falls. It, it might actually uh, be farther. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New York is fucking Rochester huge. is closer than Albany, I think, right? The Strong National no. Museum of Albany is further? farther, yeah. No, no, Albany is closer. closer. There, that's yeah. a, the Strong National yeah, yeah, Museum? Yeah. 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 Um, How did this get brought up? We were talking about, I just I asked. Oh, you big missed there. opportunity. Nintendo not having the DOS port for Super Mario. <laughs> Six and oh, and it's straight up, but like more towards me. Yeah, it's it's not far from Buffalo. Like you have to pass Syracuse. Oh, it's pretty close to... Niagara Falls. What, yeah. Wouldn't Nintendo's biggest blunder be the PlayStation? That's what I was saying. Yeah, the, the, yeah it's but, its biggest blunder. So I don't know if it would have been worth an in, it for Nintendo to partner with Sony because then they'd have to split well, they some partnered revenue. with Phillips and then the CDI. Came yeah, yeah, remember that? <laughs> that, that was, was a so blunder. Mad. You want a CDI? It's right there. It's in a box. Why, did, that why was even a big go blunder. to the museum? Exactly. <laughs> we got it right here, here. baby. It that was an, a pretty big. It's blunder. an hour and twenty minutes from the. <laughs> I would, Could, I would do we go to we're gonna go to Canada too. We go to Toronto. If Nintendo if Nintendo partnered with Sony, the PlayStation wouldn't Hortons. have happened and they wouldn't have competition. For real. No, there's one here, it's garbage though. Have what you ever had one? Tim Hortons? Yeah, garbage Tim Hortons. Not like real Tim Hortons. Go to Tim, we'll get Tim bits. I'm got, liking this. I got no Ooh. reason to go to yes, any you of these do. places. Episode one hundred. That's not a good reason. Ooh, yeah, I guess it is. It's cool. Video game history museum. It's also in like three 100. months. That's, that's a good time to end. Yeah, time to sure. It. It's, in sure. Th- it's in like 30 weeks. Oh, yeah, more than that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be like halfway 30 through weeks? next year. Summer. It's gonna that's be a whole nother contract. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign you in now. <clears throat> All 
Um, so I don't. Sorry, where are we? Where are we at? Because I I have one. There's or missed opportunities. Oh, thank you, Ringle. And PlayStation. See, we need him to keep oh. us on track. Yeah, I was gonna say again, like with the Sony thing. I know I've already said it, but I it's I don't know if that is a missed opportunity. I mean, in their eyes, maybe because they created Sony, but I think the world's better off having Sony PlayStation yes. at this yeah, point. No. Yeah. yeah, I don't. So know. I wouldn't even put that in a missed opportunity. At I least not know. on our side. I don't know what would have happened, but he's got a good point. They partnered with Phillips instead, and that was a That's fucking massive them off. L. <laughs> that they, was. They didn't tell. Him, they didn't tell them. They just released they just said they just released it at a like a, a conference or whatever that we're, we're partnering with phillips they didn't even tell sony about it they mm-hmm. still thought they were on yeah that's a messed up thing to that's do that's crazy that was that's that's, an that's thing. where they that's fucked an up Nintendo thing to do just but undercut and be like yeah, fuck you whatever i don't know what would have happened if they partnered yeah. with i mean sony even if they did and we didn't have sony and it was like merged what would that look like now for on Nintendo games. I don't know I would don't zelda know. and mario even look the same it, it might have happened either way because I think the real reason was um, there was copyright issues with the games. Like Sony was like, we want to copyright everything that's on the disc is going to be ours. Mm. And Nintendo didn't want, like that because they don't want their IPs being mm-hmm. owned by anybody mm-hmm. else. And at the time, I'm sure Nintendo liked having uh, the discs, uh, the cartridges being their own proprietary thing. Mm-hmm. Like you have to buy a cartridge. Like if you make a game for PlayStation, it's just a disc. Mm-hmm. It's a CD-ROM basically. But on, uh, and they have to license it still, but... For Nintendo 64, it was literally, you, we will sell you the cartridge to print on, mm-hmm. you know? Which they still do. Yeah. Which they still do, exactly. It's weird, they like reverted back. They like went with CDs for a while and then they were like, nah, it's quicker to be physical. Well, also they went handheld, which you can't yes. really, I mean, unless you want to do a PSP, but I never liked the discs in the PlayStation. UMDs? They yeah. were, uh, the PSP. they were cute. I it's, didn't like the way they felt or sounded. It's a very simple way to fuck up a console having a, a physical motor in it that's mm-hmm. spinning something it's mm-hmm. on, a, on a handheld that you're putting in your pocket you're moving around you're throwing <laughs> yeah. around it's not a good idea especially like you're you ever have like a walkman cd player oh yeah and baby. you move it like this oh, while yeah. you're listening it like you hear like you can eh. you can be your own dj yeah that's mm-hmm. not good you can't you're not supposed to take a cd and move it so the umds having them vertical first of all second of all in your hand while you're playing is not a good idea that's what i say <laughs> It's in like a plastic case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it would just always get fucked up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was just not a, a good of, solution. Yeah. So on the lines of uh, not buying things or or messing up transactions, letting Rare go. I made a joke about that, that was, to begin with. That was one of the It's also answers. in the article. But yeah, I think them not owning Rare and Microsoft owning Rare is a huge mistake. Yeah, I don't know what happened. How did they let that go so easily? I don't know. But that could have been such a good tandem alongside Nintendo's own first party IPs. Rare could have been making Nintendo first party IPs. And you could have had two. You could have doubled the Switch library maybe. Well, Nintendo sold Rare. It says, Nintendo sold Rare because it didn't see much value in the studio for the future, and the company was moving away from second-party developers to invest in first-party teams and collabs with third-party companies. So that's Nintendo's what, always been weird about. That's but, what I was trying to think about. It was Rare a second party? but I think it was. But it then, was, how, yeah. then how did Nintendo own it? Because that would be first-party. They probably owned part a minor of it? stake in it. Like, yeah. it probably wasn't a major... If they had 51%, I think it would have been... Different. I don't think they own that much. I think, mm-hmm. but the the licenses and the properties and the IPs, losing all of those are the mistake. Yeah, that was crazy. I think you let... keep Rare yeah. and you just change up the people that are making the games, but keep the IPs, keep the properties. Yeah. Don't get rid of everything because now you don't have it and you have to fight to get Banjo and Smash. Yeah, I don't know. They must have had a small stake in Rare. Not a small stake, but like not enough to own the whole company. And then they didn't see it worth it to, uh, oh, 49%, wait, hold on, 49%. And in 1994, Nintendo bought a 25% stake in the company that gradually increased to 49. I think, that, so I think that's the most you can have without, without being, having majority. Yeah, yeah, so it was a second party studio. And they when they let go of it, they probably didn't think it was worth getting the IPs. Honestly, they probably they might not have had a lot of money when they let go. I mean, what? Microsoft <laughs> bought Rare for $375 million. That's a lot. That is Especially a lot. at that time. Yeah. In two, yeah. To, to not do anything with yeah. it, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently- uh, You're really buying Banjo. Activision tried, <laughs> there was a bidding war between Nintendo Activision and Microsoft. 
and uh, they liked Activision's offer, but but Microsoft had more money. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And now Microsoft is making a perfect dark game that really? we haven't seen anything about. We saw they had a teaser, and I lost my goddamn mind. And then they haven't seen haven't anything I since feel, that I was feel years like ago. They rarely released any games. They rare. rarely. Yeah, I heard yeah. that too. Yeah. yeah, he did it on purpose. No, yeah, rare doesn't do much. I well, it's Sea of Thieves. I'm get, I'm get them confused with yeah. Retro. Retro Studios does, <laughs> has been helping Nintendo with a lot of shit behind the scenes, I think. One of the comments in the thread was just Zelda HD pack Wind Waker Twilight Princess, so, which I agree. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But that's just a game. I mean, that's not a missed opportunity. They what about still do that. What about the demo when the GameCube was coming out? They demoed uh, Zelda with the GameCube and oh, it yeah. looked like realistic. It was like yeah. hyper realistic. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, oh, that's awesome. And then they made Wind Waker. <laughs> yeah. And everyone, I was pissed. I was pissed. I was yeah. so pissed. But I, I, that, but I, I was like, I wanted that. What's this kid I, shit? I skipped Wind Meanwhile, Waker. I was like I was nine. So mad. I skipped Wind Waker because I was so messed. Two D garbage. Yeah. yeah, and then I played it later on, and I'm like, "Oh, this game's great." This <laughs> I is didn't. Amazing. I didn't know anything about previous promises, and one day I just went to the video game store and saw Wind Waker, and I was like, "Oh, a new Zelda!" And I bought it, and I loved it. I think yeah. I got a GameCube partially because of the Zelda demo. I was like, "That looks amazing!" I never saw it, and I then I got I a GameCube, and that game never came they, out. Yeah. They made like a, an Ocarina of Time, but. The master like, collection, yeah, thing. but yeah. it looked like uh, mm-hmm. GameCube graphics, so it looked nice. Oh, I've seen it now. Yeah, but yeah, I never saw it in the day. It was master also collection with four swords, right? It was like that well, no, that's design. a different thing. This is a uh, at E three oh, one I year. I remember the, the demo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I th- and I think their an- their answer to that was Twilight Princess at some point. Then they also showed yeah. the Mario. Took a while. Thing, like it was yeah, like, that I had no idea like about. It at the time. Or something. They were just trying to show how many Marios could be on screen. <laughs> oh my god! My copy of Wind Waker was the one that had the Ocarina disc and the Master Quest disc in it as well. Oh, cool. Wind Waker? Yeah. Oh, really? It's really expensive to find that now. But I yeah. got the. There's two. There's there's a four pack that has Ocarina yes. time in it, and then there's a two pack, which I think is the one you're talking. Yeah, about. the Wind Waker. I, I have both the, the of them full. because of some weird loophole at GameStop. I need to get the Wind Waker Ocarina one back because my friend stole it back in the day and I never rebought it. Isn't it oh. Wind Waker and then there's mm. a second like There's like, like a little flap case. inside. It's I it's win- a whole nother case. No, so it's, it's just Wind Waker. It just looks like the normal one, but there's a sticker on the outside that says also includes Master Quest and regular. And then on the inside, there's like a little flap that has the disc in it. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I have that one. Yeah, dude. It's I've seen and then that there's one. this I, one. Okay. I have. Oh, show me that. Here, take just take a hold. Of. I saw a bunch of these at too many games, and I was very interested. But they were oh, like I don't have the Wind Waker one. I have the other one. Your ca- your if that's the American one, your case is different. Then you have like a whole, like half tone pot. I've never seen that Wind Waker one. Are you talking about the one where it's like right under it? It's like Wind Waker. It's gold it Wind Waker, and then underneath like red. Yeah. Yeah. That one yeah, I've never I seen. I never seen the one. Right now. I've never seen the one with the underneath in red. Here, here's what I had. Let it it must be PAL. Oh wait, that's not even the one I have. That's Spanish. But that's similar. Hold on, let me see if I can find Australian. I worked oh, against the one that says, says bonus, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's just a little sticker. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you where, do you have a picture it's of that? The Kmart exclusive. <laughs> mine, mine didn't say Kmart on it. I worked at GameStop when they yeah, were getting rid of is. GameCube games. They oh, weren't going to sell them anymore, the so they were all on insane deals. The picture's really small. We'll have to try and send these to Brandon, but this that's one? that's what I had. Yeah. That's See, I have the thing on the right, and it's just a disc. It, it, it's, it's, it looks like this, but it's a it's just a disc. I have that. That I have. Because yeah. you, you could get the Master Quest and Ocarina separately for GameCube. Mm-hmm. Not oh. not in Australia, though. That was American, I'm pretty sure. But I have that now in my Zelda I collection. I just never re-bought the double pack with my Yeah, Master. that's the one. That, that looks like that. Yeah, yeah I have that this. now. Yeah. Didn't. Oh, and then, th- and then I have this. This is a different one. I also have that it's now. promotional. What is that one? I don't know. Zelda Collector's Edition for GameCube. Promotional disc. Includes classic games. I don't know what's on that. I can't remember. It's been so long. Oh, dude, someone's selling a limited edition. Four games. Yeah, this is the four pack. Pal With Wind Waker? GameCube. No, it's, it's probably not. It's a classic game. Then what's the full? Oh, what's, so Master Quest and, and Ocarina. Yeah, and then probably 
NES and SNES is all this probably. Majora's? Uh, N- some- NES uh, and Zelda 2. Oh, come on, Wait, man. Yeah, the, you're talking about the Zelda with the four games yeah. in it? Yeah. I had that. But so what comes, was it? It comes with a uh, Wind Waker demo, not the Wind Waker. Majora's Mask, oh. Ocarina of Time, Zelda 2, and Original Zelda. Okay, yeah. well, Majora's on GameCube. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, so it, it doesn't it have does. Master Quest, mm. then? It does, but the... Uh, it, and it also came with the demo for Wind Waker. It, does it have Master Quest or no? No. Okay. Look what I sent on Discord. It's uh, for $800, you can get a GameCube Special Edition PAL with Wind Waker. And it comes with um, a controller and Wind Waker and Master Edition. That's that's a lot. Whoa. $800. This is PAL? Yeah. Does it have does it have a jewel or is it? No. It's, what it's, what, what makes it's it? just a silver uh, GameCube. I think mm. what makes it special is obviously the box. Yeah, you're paying mm-hmm. for the box there. Yeah, and it comes with all that stuff with it. Okay, that's cool. It'll be here November. Okay. Cool. <laughs> put it in here. We'll donate. donate it to the, uh, the Brooklyn Museum. History Museum. Yeah, we'll take it to the museum. We'll donate it to the museum. Uh, someone else said they didn't call Splatoon to Splatoon. Two. Splatoon. Splatoon two. Oh my god. Bro. <laughs> Can I just put this away? Shouldn't have got that second coffee. <laughs> Between there's a game, and I would play it nonstop, and that's Zelda Dungeon Maker or something like that. Oh, that's a oh, good was one. Was that the was that thing? Yeah, a fan was making it, and and, and uh, Nintendo shut them down real quick. It <laughs> was it was a thing in Link's Awa- uh, Awakening. It was it was terrible. I know. So how could they make that better? <laughs> they 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 can. They could definitely make it better. I think the Zelda... F- I mean... I don't know if I'd want to run other people's Zelda dungeons. So Mario is really easy to get right, especially yeah. if you give them a limited amount of tools it's to make a Mario game. It's also fast-paced and fun. And- yeah, it, it's easier to make it fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zelda, I think a lot of it is the dungeon design. So yeah. giving people those... You'd have to curate it in a way where they can't fuck it up, and that seems hard. I don't know how they would They're do all going to be boring and then too long... People say that about Sonic too. They should make a Sonic maker, but Sonic, that'd be insane. The level design is all it is. Yeah. You know, like like you can easily fuck up a did, Sonic did level. They do a Mega Man, Mega Maker, or something. Someone made a Mega Man one. I never really tried it. There was a game that never came out, but it was um, it was a Mario Maker, Metroid Maker, Castlevania Maker, uh, Zelda Maker, uh, all in one. That's crazy. And it, it never came out, but it looked awesome. Weren't, weren't they originally doing it with the N64, though? I think they were trying to make a 3D Zelda maker, and then it turned into Master Quest at some point. I have no idea. I did not know that. I didn't, I don't think they were doing any sort of maker stuff until uh, Mario Maker. And uh, Game Builder Garage. Remember a Game Builder Garage? I hated that game. I, I, I thought it was fun. Like I thought game. there was a lot of fun, silly stuff in that game. It could have gotten a little silly. I though. didn't like the way they set up the tutorials. What was the problem? I don't remember. Um, I can't remember exactly, but they were very long and you had to play them all in order. And it was like, make a top down game, make a beat em up, make a blah, blah, blah. But they made you do it in order. And mm-hmm. I was like, but I want to make one of these. And they were like hour to two hour long tutorials. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked playing other people's stuff and it was all wacky and wild. It was crazy. Some people did some really cool things. Yeah. I saw somebody made, what was this with Labo? Somebody made a uh, a Ghostbusters working vacuum backpack with the switch using the IR reader to scan ghosts that they had made. And they put up like ghosts from Luigi's mansion around their house. And they had like a vacuum and the IR reader was just in the top and they were like. That's awesome. I think you and, can do Labo with Game Builder Garage. They put the switch on the back of the uh, vacuum cleaner and they made it look like a level. So like it was like going up as they sucked things That's in. Sick. That's sick. Yeah. Cool That's as awesome. That. It would have been cool if they did more <coughs> stuff with the Mario Kart home. Yeah, that kind of circuit. fizzled yeah. out. Because remember what I did for that? That was why insane. did they not? Yeah, you did. You did in your basement. Yeah. Why yeah. did they not release expansion packs and other cards? You could have done Yoshi oh, and dude. Peach, and then each one you could have released with like extra things for the courses. Yeah, that would have been so cool. Yeah. I remember I bought for an Etsy video. Somebody made a bunch of like traffic cones and bananas and a pipe, 
and I bought it from Etsy, but I like built a better Mario Kart course with that stuff. Yeah. But some actual official things that reacted with the game would have been really Dude, cool. When we made the <clears throat> largest Mario Mario Kart home course. Like we we just took everything from my collection and created this giant in my basement course. That's and cool. We had to put the switch dock in the middle of it because it being too far to the start of it wouldn't allow you to get to the end of it. So I had the same thing yeah. when I took mine to an actual go kart course. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. I tried to race it around, but I kept losing connectivity. That was nuts. Yeah. That, that was the best video we've ever had. So, so I took, <laughs> I took, like Mr. Beast style. Was great. I took the Reddit thread and I sorted the comments by controversial. And all of them mm-hmm. are not committing to their partnership with Sony. Oh, really? The top four so far are people talking about the partnership with Sony. Someone said doing so little with Animal Crossing New Horizons. Yeah. Which, yes, that is yeah. still really even. They I, burnt it out really quick. I was like 200, 300 hours in that game. And even, I would say even I, because I look at Kim, who has like a thousand hours in that game. Even I was like, man, they could have done so much more to keep me so engaged. Yeah, they didn't really have a good strategy for that. They released... I don't think they were expecting it to do as good as it did. (laughs) It was during COVID. And then they should have been like, okay, it's doing good. Yeah, Yeah, everybody come in and help work on this game. Instead, they they were like, no, this is all the content we had planned. They dropped the game. It did have a ton of content, not as much as some other games, but a ton of content. Everyone was excited for possible updates and patches and DLC. And then randomly, they come out out of nowhere and they're like, okay, here's... Two big DLCs that are happening. One's free, one's paid for, and then that's it. Don't ask for anything else. And it was like, this is the first time we're even hearing about DLC, and you're telling us in this that this is it. No. And then, yeah, there was nothing after that. And was the DLC even any good? Yeah, Didn't I like the DLC. Yeah. Okay. There was a free one that added in a ton of stuff to the base game, and then there was the Happy Home Designer, which was a whole new Essentially, what was a standalone game on 3DS, they just integrated it into this game. Mm-hmm. So that actually added a lot, but they could have just kept going. There is so much that you can add to that game. Yeah, collabs, like adding new yeah. furniture, like expanding the place. New uh, characters, space, new villages, like like leaving the island yeah. or like expanding the island, just constantly bugging. adding in things. My brothers are bugging me to play it again. I'm like, I just know I'm not going to. It's do such it, an like, investment. And also, yeah, I don't want to yeah. hours in if there was new stuff, fine, yeah. but that's a real shame. That's Remember, a real what was it? The, the, what what vegetable was it that was like the currency in that game? Turnips. Turnips. Yeah, everyone was yeah. like, "Yo, it's fucking Friday, dude." That was the so turnips much fun. are going crazy. The today. turnip lady. I would get a text, and I'm like, "Oh shit, it's like four in the morning." Oh, oh yeah. shit, I gotta go to turnip lady. Turnip lady. I think she came every Sunday. I mean, how much your turnips? And then you join yeah, another guy's go, game. Yeah, get yeah, in yeah. here. I got the twenty dollars. I got the good turnip. I got the good nips. Yeah. Yeah, you'd buy I did that them. once, and then I was like, "Oh, this is crazy!" And then I got all the terms, and I'm like, "Why do I? Why did I just do that?" There was <laughs> what was the purpose of that? There was two websites. I'm sure there was many, but there was one kind of website that was the turnip stock exchange. Yes, which if you put in the price of your turnips each week, it would calculate and expect what your turnip prices will be over the next seven days. And then there was the turnip. Uh, friend meet app where yeah. people would post, oh, my turnips are $300 today. And so they'd give their friend code and they would be accepting people, which is wild because it meant that someone out there in the world was just taking the day to accept people on their yeah. island all day, which is, it took so much effort they, to they do that. They would do some things. They'd be like, they'd like make a sign that's like, hey, I need uh, like this yeah. item or something. And then if they wanted something specifically, you would try and give it to them. But people would leave money on the way out. Yeah. They like would just drop things on their island as a thank you on the way out. It was the happiest time. I know. It was so no good. Shit. Yeah, that's the thing is that at that time, we weren't allowed to leave the house. I know. So like that was the way to do it was yeah. to go to some random guy's island and be like, hey, here's perfect. some bells. People would get on Discord with like groups of like five, six people and they would all join an island, sit around a fire on the beach and just talk all night long. Yeah. And yeah. sing in front of the fire because mm-hmm. there were the stars. And mm-hmm. stuff. The guy who wrote, I think Gary Witta had a podcast in Animal Crossing or something. That's insane. Yeah. The guy who wrote Rogue One. <laughs> that's so cute. Man, that's a Man. special time. Thank, I'm going to say it. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> Thank you, COVID. Might have killed a lot of people, but I had a lot of fun <laughs> in Animal Crossing. It was a Crossing. special time. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't have happened without the vid. 
It you couldn't know? have been better. So <laughs> you got to give it props oh where it's earned it. Uh, another part of this thread, which I think is interesting, making a DS player for the Wii U like they did with Game Boy for SNES and Game Boy Advance for GameCube. Wait, a DS player? DS player for Wii U. Yeah, that would have worked. That could, yeah, that yeah, that would have worked pretty worked. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah would have. They had to skip a generation two, though. They had the two screen yeah. stuff the going on. Yeah. Double yeah. magic like, why screen else action. Even make that console. <laughs> and it was cartridge. Yeah, it's really not hard to make a, a piece yeah, just, that could go in there. Yeah, a, a thing that I mean, they all. I'm pretty sure the Wii U and even the Wii had like weird attachment bays. Yeah. You know, all of their consoles had weird attachment bays. Well, the Wii had a GameCube in it. Yeah. So well, the Wii was basically a GameCube. Yeah. Um, that was one of the controversial ones. So controversial. So brave. Mario Kart DS was on the Wii U. Was that true? Not having a proper Mario game at GameCube launch. Yeah. I hated that. Sunshine came out later, no? Yeah, Sunshine came out later. Luigi's Mansion came out. So they they Mm -hmm. don't always have a Mario game. They had Zelda for Switch. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh, This was was GameCube time, though. Before that, it was usually a Mario game at launch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did an Odyssey I, come out with the Switch? No, Odyssey came out uh, months no, it later. came out in October. October. Oh, Same year, though. Later, yeah. So I, that's part of why I hate Luigi's Mansion, because when I was a kid, I wanted Mario, and I got a GameCube, and I was like, what the fuck is this Luigi game? It's not nothing like a Mario game, and no. it pissed me off. How long did it take Sunshine to come out? A long time. Mm. Like a year, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a year. When did Luigi's Mansion come out? At launch. launch. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was a That's launch why title. it's like all we have is Luigi's Mansion. Mm. This is a Nintendo console. I, I don't want to play as this guy. Stand, so I, I was like, oh, this is cool. This is something. I different. like Luigi, but I I don't want a ghost game. No, I you know, that, I want a yeah. Mario game. The, I uh, not being a big Mario fan at that point, <laughs> I didn't really pay attention. I didn't know Luigi's Mansion was a launch game. I can't believe I still didn't know that even now. You the GameCube came out uh, in the U.S. November eighteenth. 2001 and Sunshine came out July 19, 2002. So mm. six months later, mm. more. It's months. a summer game. Sure, but it could have <laughs> also been the launch. There were. It should have been in reality, but whatever. They probably couldn't. They probably were still figuring it out. Someone else had a good suggestion in here. Nintendo getting too comfortable with the current situation that Pokemon is in. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm down with that. Yeah, Nintendo needs just not to stepping step, in at yeah. any point. They, I don't know how they do that. I don't know how I don't know that would work because it's like rare they don't own a majority well, of Pokemon. They company. should step in the same way that like a dad steps in when his kid is like doing drugs. throwing crap all over his house. Yeah, you know, you're, you're making about- the place dirty. You live here. How about you clean up your act? Yeah. Are you talking about like cards, like the card selling? Or are you talking no, about the, no, fucking the games. games being garbage? The horrible God, games. Yeah. Scarlet. They I just violent. released DLC, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you remember where the money? I just remember I got sponsored by it. <laughs> That's <laughs> the pure <laughs> transformation in your eyes. Was incredible. That was so. <laughs> good. Fuck it. You know what? It's great. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. <laughs> I didn't even buy the game. <laughs> you know what, Bob Good can Lord. say something, I yeah, think. I mean, it looks just as bad as the base game. It lo- even the trailers, the frame rate is garbage. Some would say it looks worse. <laughs> I not, am not you, though. I am not me. Some would God, say that. no, not me. I love it. <laughs> anyway, I looked up GameCube launch titles. Some bangers. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader. I had Yo. that. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Oh, my God. Crazy yeah. Taxi. Oh, my God. Batman Vengeance. That's a Ubisoft game. I love Batman. That Batman game. <laughs> so they had Batman Vengeance. I love Batman. There was a much worse Batman game on the GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> Batman good. Batman good. What's this one? This is the one. <laughs> I love Batman. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Batman Vengeance was the good one. The bad one was Batman Dark Tomorrow. Judge if we have to cut this one. <laughs> no, it's just good stuff. Yeah. It's mm. late in the day. We're getting <laughs> loopy. We're getting We're silly. My bit here a minute. I'm wearing a tent. Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> <laughs> you went out like that. <laughs> you went into the world like that. Multiple people yeah. complimented we you. Yeah. We, turned, we were like, oh, you guys are like a rock band. What? <laughs> I think it was just because of this. It was like, I think thing. it was giving a vibe to the whole yeah. group. It was our, our hair, too. Yeah. The, the hair, hair sure, that. yeah. Three guys here, 
We have got that before, to be fair, even without the sweater. But I think the sweater was highlighting the, the sweater ridiculousness. The sweater was doing a, a number on it. I went out, as because you put it on me, because it's ease. Yeah. And I was like, that's fun. I don't care. I'll wear it, because it's cold out. But I did feel a little goofy. And I did not expect three different people to compliment <laughs> yeah, my sweater. Yeah, we were sweater. out for like two seconds. Yeah, everyone was like, that's a great sweater. <laughs> I walked out. I, I use that to walk cheap. It's massive, though. I don't know if it's even in shop. It's but- Oh my god, dude. And that's the mythical? That's the mythical society one. And then I have another one for Erica. It's so funny that I didn't know you were a big fan to Retin Link. I uh, uh yeah, I don't know why I'm still subscribed to that. It's I was I was telling him upstairs, but it's their mythical society, it's like their Patreon. If you twenty bucks a month, they send you gifts every month. Yeah. And they're like good I've gifts. The vinyl, I've gotten the, the yeah. metal. I've I got the chia pets and stuff. Yeah. I was doing it for a year, and then I was like, "Why am I?" It's a lot of Nick. Now. I don't need more crap. It's a, I know. I kept getting crap, and like I, they it's do big. good merch drops. Oh, it's really. But you cool. don't need all At of them. You know, there was thing. one that was a, a Viewmaster that they sent. It was an actual old school Viewmaster in a box, and then it has like a reel of like their pictures in it. Like they made such cool stuff. Yeah, they just came out with cereal. I did see that. Yeah. The cereal, I wanted to get it. It's for you have to buy two boxes, and with shipping, it's thirty bucks. For two boxes of uh, cereal, and the cereal boxes are half the size of like a regular like Cheerios box. It's a lot. That's probably like four k. That's I like want to try it. That's like almost as much as Magic Spoon. How much Magic Spoon? Magic is, Spoon's a lot of money. I think Magic Spoon is ten dollars a box. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, petting dogs in Breath of the Wild. I agree. I saw a game. I don't remember what game it is, but it's a game that's coming out where you pet the dog, you walk over to the dog and it's a petting mini game and you pet it and like there's a little slider and if you pet it good enough, it gets a skateboard, does a kick flip. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. That game sounds awesome. Sick. Yeah. (laughs) You give it a skateboard and then it does a kick flip and then you keep petting. There's a lot of, I'm reading the thread here, but there's a lot of, suggestions for like games and stuff i'm not really too big about those i think games can be a kind of a flash in the pan moment for the most part Mm -hmm. like there's someone said ignoring f-zero and star fox wii u controls and stuff like that. a big missed opportunity is not making a good star fox game (laughs) yeah okay yeah star fox is one i mean again a lot of that's like i look at the grand scheme of a console and like how the ecosystem is is much more relevant and prevalent to everybody than like a star fox game but not having a really cool Star Fox game is a mistake. It's an IP that you're shelving that could be worth so much more. Oh, it's one of their biggest ones. I think F Zero, I care a little bit less about because I just don't understand how they could you make know a why? relevant F Zero game. Why? I think that F Zero got left in the wayside because Nintendo's first party IPs, their main ones, they always push, they're each in their own genre mm-hmm. and they don't have any competing genres. Yeah, you're right. You're and right. Mario Kart is just too popular for them to bother doing F-Zero. Yeah, they would need to do a completely different style of racer or something. Mm, yeah. I don't think it would be a racer. To me, it would be like a normal game because they've, you know... Grand Theft Auto, but you're a bounty hunter. But when, yeah. When you think <laughs> That's actually saying, not a bad idea. But when you think F-Zero, you just think of Captain Falcon and Smash. So Yeah, yeah but, but like, whose fault is that? Fault, yeah. Yeah. You could have had like an RPG too where you yeah. use like... You know, Captain Falcon I mean, as the main character. That's a completely now we're now we're F-Zero making a completely GX different game. You know, awesome. Growing up, yeah, but what did you do in that game? It's just racing, racing, right? Yeah, we had, the, we had the wheel. Growing up, awesome. not having played in F Zero and mm-hmm. playing Smash first, yeah. I always wondered what kind of game F Zero was or where Captain Falcon fell into the whole thing. Every time I saw it, I yeah, was like, like oh, it's a Jack racing dude? game. Yeah, I only found where's out about the it? fighting. Yeah, it was. Captain I just Falcon. thought he was a fighting guy. But Star Fox, that seems easy to not fuck up yeah but somehow they and they don't have it. a game in that genre it'd be really easy to do yeah. something really cool with that yeah we don't have a lot of cool like a uh, 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 dog fighting game you know okay, not, do that. not that type of i mean i know you did michael vick's dog fighting <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and let me finish here but i know you didn't like starlink battle for whatever because it was yeah. ubisoft yeah. but if nintendo tried to do something like that like a big planet open world game with yeah. star fox and ships that could be sick yeah. yeah no i think they would do really good mm-hmm. yeah somehow starfield felt like the division and watchdogs i don't know how they did it i was like i feel like i'm playing that fucking game starfield i'm having a stroke starlink i'm having a stroke i, I li- like the idea i like starlink quite a lot but it got boring pretty quickly i thought the idea of the controller was cool Having a, having this spaceship just on your controller, but like the, I liked the it. Whole, like, 
is kind of like a uh, toys to life. Sure, whatever. I just yeah. I mean, the toys were cool. I mean, being able to, I, I, I like the idea. It doesn't really work and it didn't work because it's all gone away. But I like the idea of I'm playing in my ship or whatever and I come across a game, uh, a door in the game that needs a certain weapon to open it. So I grab the physical weapon and I click it on and then I shoot that door. And now the door opens. That's really cool. Nintendo did a lot of cool stuff with Amiibo. There's a missed <laughs> opportunity. They stopped doing Amiibo stuff. Mario oh, Wonder didn't come dude, out with any Amiibos. That's a huge missed opportunity. Is yeah. having here's the biggest one: having a game that uses all the Amiibos yeah. in a cool way yeah. that incorporates it. Smash Brothers did a good job, and they they put a lot of stock into Amiibos for that game specifically. But Smash is the only else. one, yeah. and it doesn't use every Amiibo. Because the Amiibos yeah. aren't just Smash. Amiibos. It just uses most of them. It uses most. Of most them. of them are yeah. for Smash. Yeah, Amiibos are definitely missed opportunity. You know what? They don't do anything outside of Smash. So, Amiibos worked great in Mario Maker 1. And then they took yeah, all of that out true. for Mario yeah. Maker 2. Yeah. And that was a big disappointment. That's part of why I like the first but one better. Were players, like, complaining about Amiibos at all? Uh, What do you mean? In what? Like, I know some people were complaining about certain Amiibos in certain games because they were saying, oh, it's, like, missed features because I can't have it. I don't have yeah, it. Yeah, like... It's considered cheating in some games like Mario Odyssey. You can just straight up get extra lives. Like even in Breath of the Wild, that there's an amiibo run and non amiibo run. Yeah, the amiibos in Breath of the Wild are the only times, and Tears of the Kingdom, are the only times I actually used amiibos, and it was cool, but it always <coughs> felt a little bit like cheating. Well, there's Thank you. also like the quick save feature in um, Skyward Sword, mm. where you could just save anywhere. Oh, that's. True. I also did something in nice, Metroid though. Dread, yes. but that was. That was panned as being like paid DLC for a, for a nice no. feature. It was because you had to. Oh. It was like they didn't really add anything into Skyward Sword. Oh, and that was the only thing. But you could save anywhere now if you bought the amiibo. Yeah, yeah. I think Metroid Dread once a day you can get health or something. So like you just like if you just add it to your save file, you just gain health <laughs> or missiles or so. Or no, I think there's a missile oh, upgrade. That was permanent. I got to look. Whoa, that's cool. Wait, why? In Metroid Dread, the Amiibos did something really fucked up. I don't remember. It was like definitely cheating. I watched a YouTube video once of someone explaining how cool a game could be if they used all the Amiibos. It might have even been Scott the Was mentioned it once. Who's it, that? It sounded really cool at also, the time. In um, Like a in, Skylanders thing, but with Twilight Amiibos. Twilight Princess, yeah. there was a whole dungeon you couldn't get to unless you had the Amiibo. So, oh, so. Yeah. In, in Metroid Dread, if you have the Samus Amiibo, you get one permanent energy tank. Wow. <laughs> and so it, you can't die. If you, no, you can't. It, it's it extra health. It, oh, the extra, upgrade. Extra, an extra cell. That Just you couldn't one time. get oh. otherwise. Oh. And, in, and if you have the Emmy Amiibo, it's a missile tank. So you just get an extra missile storage. So it's extra health storage and extra missile storage. You know what storage. would be a cool video when I shotgun making it? No one at home, please take it. Is just every use of an Amiibo in a video game. Yeah, that'd be a yeah. long video. That'd be, that'd be long for you to figure out. It wouldn't be as long as you think, there's I don't there's think. Probably. There's a lot of games that have little Amiibo functionality. Uh, also, I was right about once a day, if you tap one of the Amiibos, you get missiles or a missile restock or health restock. So if you're stuck in a part of the game and like your save file is like, you know, like... You're getting killed nonstop. Yeah, you could just go bink and just fucking <laughs> get health. I'll give you a missile once a day. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm sure there's more and you can leave them down below, but that was a really fun conversation to have. I think thank ultimately, you uh, thank you, Reddit. I think ultimately Nintendo's doing fine. Oh and yeah, dude. I do hope some of these things get implemented for the Switch too. It would be really cool to see at least achievements and stuff like that, but I highly doubt it. I think they'll have something. I mean, they're definitely going to fix... I have a lot of faith that they're going to fix something about their online account system and they're going to add features to that. The so online does seem like... That was the like, first thing we talked about and I think that that will be fixed a little bit. It does seem like they've, they've already mentioned that they want to fix that. Yeah. So, we'll see. Leave down below your suggestions and the things you think they should have done differently. Like, comment, and subscribe and rate us five stars. Don't forget to hit like on the video. Also, go down in the description and you can see our merch. Get this hoodie. Buy this hoodie. Also, come over to the Patreon and watch the bonus Patreon episode that we're about to film Buy right the now. That I am wearing. Are there spots? Where we deep dive into how Sorry. big Bob's toes really are. Pretty big. See you there.